you've come back to join us today with a double act as i call it this weekend attached to this particular video that i'm about to play by connor maynard dance with somebody the famous whitney houston cover that he's covered i'm also going to attach the most incredible english discovery as well from female wise so you get the best of both worlds attached to one video and even when you listen to hers this particular song will come up as well because please comment like and subscribe to my channel and you'll find out more what's going on i'm going to make it an uplifting weekend i think the world needs it we've had sober songs sad songs but yet somebody told me Connor Maynard's version of Dance With Somebody is melancholic in its delivery. His voice is full of drama and he delivers a twist in the song and he makes it into almost a ballad. And I said, with Whitney Houston's song? And he said, yeah, yeah, CC, seriously. Listen to it. So I'm about to listen to it for the first time, but not before as always, it's a bio channel. To give you a little bit of background on Connor himself, he was born and raised in Brighton in England. He signed a record contract with Warner Music Group way back when he started his career in 2011. He rose to fame the following year when he was nominated for and subsequently won MTV's brand new artiste for 2012. Now MTV was a program that would just similar to me, introduce music from throughout the world, and it was so, so popular. The thing about this particular artist, Connor, is that he does a lot of what I say to people, keep doing it, YouTube covers, putting them out on YouTube, and amassing followers. He is still not known throughout the world. He is still underrated and he was brought to my attention and I've been in the business of doing music reactions for many many years everybody and I'm still discovering people like Connor on my own doorstep because he's just across the water as we would say in, in Ireland here and there he is performing away for 10 years and I've just discovered him I did look back in his catalogue of incredible covers I thought wow and that's only in the last 48 hours everybody I've listened to five of his cover songs and thought good God why is he underrated well we'll find out in a minute what the twist of this particular song that he's made into a ballad so it's nice to think that a dance song can be slowed down turned into a ballad and delivered according to friends of mine in such an incredible way at the 30th Grammy Awards, I want to dance to somebody, one for best female pop vocal performance, making Houston's second win in the category. Dun, 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 dun. And then we go and we play this version. And we come back and we talk a little more about Whitney Houston, the song and the background to dance with somebody. But I believe this is a ballad. So take it away, Connor Maynard. And let's see why you are one of England's most foremost critiqued and loved male singers.
Now, I have to pretend to clap because my microphone picks up everything and I've had people go, ah, when they've listened to my reactions. So I just pretend. And, um, but I pretend like this because honest to God, that was, that's, that shocked me actually. I didn't think that song could be done this way. And if it had been done this way, I certainly wouldn't have th thought of an unknown to my channel and me, a person I'm not familiar with it would have been familiarity probably with more somebody more famous but I don't want to mention them I want to keep it to Connor Maynard Connor you are appearing tomorrow this is Thursday I'm uploading this video here in Dublin and I'm preparing for Saturday that's what I do on a Thursday and you know I, I release my videos on a Tuesday and Thursday uh, sorry Tuesday and Saturday every week and I prepare the weekend for Tuesday and during the week for Saturday. That's how I do things. And in between, I'm an author and I'm writing a new set of novels. But still, let's get back to you. You are dramatic. Your vocals are liquid gold. You are incredible. And I've just learned you're in Dublin. And you're tomorrow evening. Imagine me doing this out of the blue on a recommendation. And probably now I understand why you were recommended because tomorrow evening you're singing in Abbey Street. I wish I'd done this a couple of weeks in advance prior because I would have promoted you so much to say go to the concert because I'm going to buy my ticket today. I'm walking my dog in a while and I'll go right down to Abbey Street. I'm actually, this where this building is, it's actually just around the corner in one of the other main streets. One of the busiest shopping streets is next to me, Henry Street. And I'm caught in the middle. What used to be a hospital is now apartments and a shopping centre. That's where I live. So, Connor, I'm going to buy my ticket just on that performance alone. I don't want to go through the lyrics too much, but I do want to give people a little bit of bio because a lot of people are growing up with Whitney tunes, but they're still not so familiar about her. But I want to give about the song. The background says, I want to dance with somebody was written. And as I said, we all know it was written by George Morrell and Shannon R Rubicon, and who wrote that 1985 song, How Will I Know, which became just as successful for them. But when it came to finding a song that would be ideal for Houston and to be inspired by her vocals, I want to dance with somebody seemed to fit at the time of what was happening in the charts as being something different and would catapult it to number one and it certainly did later on rubikin one of the co-writers explained the idea behind the song 
I pictured somebody single wishing that they could find a special person for themselves. It wasn't, I wasn't going to go down the disco and dance, really. It was, I want, I want to do that dance of life with somebody. So that's what the song's about. It's about, they want to do the dance of life, not just a dance. And I always associate it with just, I, I just want to grab somebody at the dance floor and dance. So this is a, this has made it much more special and clearer as to the profoundness of, of what he wrote. That, he's t that he turned a dance track into like a love ballad, if that makes sense. Because what's the old saying, don't everybody who gets married, they have their dance, the partners go up in the dance floor and they dance. So that springs to mind when he says that. And that was the thought behind the songs, he continues. So he sent our demo version to Clive Davis, who loved it. Now, Clive Davis, everybody, was the man. And still, his name is the person. And he was associated with Whitney right up to Whitney's end. And he's an American record producer, A&R executive, record executive and lawyer. And has won five Grammy Awards and was included and inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a non-performer in 2000. So there you go. Now the song failed to impress producer Narada Michael Warden, who would be known to us older people, and he was an American musician, songwriter, record producer. And he acquired the nickname Narada from Sari Chimney, but who also produced How Will I Know. He took a little more persuading with regard to the song's potential and at first was not too keen on having Houston record it as he felt it was too country and western sounding. And I have to say something, what ears have you got, Narada? Because there's no way in the world I want to dance with somebody sung by Whitney Houston Sounds Country and Western. Not a hope in hell is that the case because whenever Whenever I think of it, whenever I hear it, I think instant pop, get on the dance floor, shake your beauty and just do your thing and don't care who's looking. And that's what he said of it. And he said it reminded me of a rodeo song with the Liv Newton-John singing it. I love Liv Newton-John, but for Whitney Houston, it didn't seem right. Boy, am I glad Clive was in charge of Whitney and not you. Whitney would have sank on a ship. Honestly. That is, that's actually, I'm reading this for the first time and I'm getting a great kick out of it. It's the first time I've wrote, uh, read this and he took a little more persuading than this, he said. And it didn't seem right and I felt the song needed a much funkier feel. I slept dreaming about it, woke up in the morning thinking about it, wondering what am I going to do with this dance song. So we just jumped in the water and lo and behold, a magic record was born and Houston just knocked it. And then I knew we had a good record. Ah, okay, so... Initially it sounded, and latterly, when he put his magical dust on it, it became what it did. Well, I'm glad you changed your mind, and I'm glad you did that then. Because for a minute there, I thought you were saying the end product was. So misunderstanding on my part. So for the song's production, Roland, it was used to produce a drum machine percussion. Now fast forward to... When she performed it, it wasn't always performed. She did perform this, the song during the Body World Tour. She performed it during the self entitled the concert for a New South Africa. And she also, in the 1994 FIFA World Cup final at Rose Bowl in Los Angeles, broadcast in more than 180 countries. So it still continues to be her legacy. It still continues to be that associated song that we all love Whitney for. And as for you, Connor, doing such an incredible cover, congratulations. And thank you, everybody, for listening to the bio on the song, the bio on Connor, and remembering Whitney Houston. And I'm going to call this the best cover of that song I've ever heard. Congratulations, Connor. And I look forward to attending tomorrow night your concert. And I shall give another reaction with what I thought of the concert very soon. Until then.